A lot of people think the play is about moral questions, about whether scientists should work on uh, weapons. But of course, moral questions do come into it. Before we can make any moral judgments of anyone, we have to understand why they're doing what they do. Um, you can't make a moral judgment about anyone unless you have some knowledge of their intentions. My play Copenhagen is based on a real event and a real mystery. It's about a meeting between two great scientists during the Second World War in Nazi-occupied Denmark. Werner Heisenberg, the German physicist, and Niels Bohr, the Danish physicist. Now, the two men had been close friends and colleagues for over 20 years. They had pioneered the field of atomic physics, and eventually their work would lead to the development of the first atomic bomb. And the problem was that at the time of the meeting in Copenhagen, they were on opposite sides in the war. So the meeting was fraught with difficulty from the beginning. And ever since then, people have argued about what it was the two men said to each other at the meeting and what it was that Heisenberg wanted to say. They were two of the greatest physicists of the 20th century because they had begun to establish what happens inside the tiny world of the atom. When they first met at the beginning of the 20s, Niels Bohr was already extremely famous. He was a great physicist who had won the Nobel Prize for his work. And Heisenberg was a young man at the very beginning of his career, a very cheeky and brilliant young student. And they did a lot of their very best work together they had taken the lead in developing quantum mechanics, possibly the most important and successful theory ever to be introduced into physics. It was a match made in heaven, with Bohr pioneering the physical picture that he could see in his mind's eye, and Heisenberg, the mathematician, the, the person who could then put into concrete mathematical language the dance of atoms, the dance of electrons that Bohr could only dream about. And that's where Niels Bohr and Heisenberg worked so well. Heisenberg's famous uncertainty principle that he introduced into quantum mechanics in the 1920s um, demonstrates that we can never have total knowledge of the behavior of physical object. It only matters when we're talking about very fast moving ones like particles, but in theory it applies to everything. And if we can't know everything, about a physical object. We can't make predictions about it. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle challenges our normal understanding of the world. We physicists go crazy when we think about the uncertainty principle. Some people think that physics is a, is a finished question. We, we know everything, given enough information. You know where objects are. You know how they're going to perform. You can predict the outcomes of things. So it's really upsetting. It's really upsetting to some people at a very deep fundamental level that we physicists really don't know where things really are at any given time. That ultimately there is this uncertainty that goes to the very heart of reality itself. Heisenberg was still only 33 when he won the Nobel Prize for the uncertainty principle. But it was also the year in which um, Hitler came to power. Heisenberg could have left Germany. He was offered jobs in various American universities. Heisenberg has been much criticized because he didn't go. Absolutely no one thinks Heisenberg was a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer. The criticism that's made of him is that he acquiesced, that he was uh, too prepared to compromise with the Nazi regime. The advent of Hitler began to place a great strain on the friendship between the two men. Then there was a discovery in the field of atomic physics which changed everything. In the 1930s, it was demonstrated that if you fissioned the nucleus, if you split the nucleus of an atom, it released energy. It 
suddenly seem theoretically possible to use atomic physics to produce power for either constructive or destructive purposes. This was the moment when atomic physics ceased to be purely abstract and took on an immense significance for the future of the human race. Niels Bohr, because he liked to think in terms of physical pictures, had the idea that the nucleus of the atom was like a droplet of water, where surface tension kept the, the droplet of water intact and spherical. However, if you came in and hit it with an outside object, this liquid drop could then fission in half into two smaller liquid drops. And then he realized that perhaps you could release fantastic amounts of energy, the energy that was known to be stored in the nucleus of the atom by splitting it with this liquid drop. And then he very rapidly calculated that you had to have an exotic form of uranium, U-235. Then began an international chase to see who could get this fabulous U-235, this rare form of uranium. What was at stake was the fate of humanity itself. Bohr and Heisenberg were the leaders in a kind of physics that could now be used to produce, in theory, a most terrible weapon. But they were cut off from each other. When the war broke out in 1939, Heisenberg knew that that was the end of his contact with Bohr in Copenhagen. And he wrote a very moving letter to Bohr, which goes right to the heart of the father-son relationship they had. Dear Bohr, since I don't know whether and when our destiny will lead us together again, I will once again thank you for all your friendship, for everything I have learned from you, and for everything you have done for me. In old friendship, yours, Werner Heisenberg. In 1941, the two men had been out of contact for two years. Bohr had been living uh, precariously because he was half Jewish under Nazi occupation. And what he didn't know was that his old friend Heisenberg was now running the German atomic research program. Now, with enormous difficulty, Heisenberg managed to go to Copenhagen and he was very insistent on a personal meeting with Bohr. According to Heisenberg, they began some kind of conversation. Um, Niels Bohr became upset and then angry, and the conversation was broken off, according to Heisenberg, before he could explain what it was he wanted to say. And people have been arguing ever since about two things, what it was, they did actually manage to say to each other and what it was Heisenberg wanted to go on to say. I thought the meeting suggested a very good parallel between Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and the um, psychological uncertainty that I think exists, the theoretical barrier in knowing why people do what they do. And the particular difficulty of knowing why Heisenberg went to Copenhagen seemed to focus the difficulty in one particular incident. And what the play is about is whether we can really have any absolute knowledge of tensions. <laughs>